Hi my love, it's your girl Liz from Pretty Progress 23. Welcome back to the acne channel. Today's video is all about acne scarring. How do we get them, the different types of acne scars and how to treat them. Let me start off by saying that we all scar differently and picking at our skin does heighten our chances of getting acne scarring, but it isn't the only reason why we scar. Let's talk about how we get acne scarring. I had pimples at the age of 12. This is when I was going through the puberty stage. My hormones were fluctuating and I was doing a lot of sport, I was sweating at school, not really taking care of my diet or anything. And I had hundreds of little pimples all across my forehead. I had a very oily nose and lots of lots of blackheads. Um, it never became a severe cystic acne until I was 17. And in hindsight, I didn't really understand how it got to that stage, that severity where it was like sacks of pus underneath my skin. And I realized in hindsight, it was because I relied on Western medication, birth control pills, antibiotics, just things that I found on the internet. I had tried so many different things without really paying attention to what my body really needed. So in the process of having really severe cystic acne, it basically ruined the collagen and caused me to have indented scarring. This stage of my life was a really difficult time and I was left in a dark place where I locked myself in the room and I just wouldn't go outside. I would cancel on social events. I would make up excuses that I'm sick or I have a stomach ache and I just wouldn't face the world and for so long I pretty much lost myself until recently I practiced self-love and I and I told myself that I'm worth investing in the reason why I'm making this video is I hope that it's informative and I really want to encourage you guys that no matter what type of scarring or whatever you have you are not obligated to treat your scars and at the same time if you want to treat your scars you can simultaneously love yourself my favorite quote is, you can be a masterpiece and simultaneously be a work in progress. So try to avoid putting unnecessary blame on top of all the pain that we already feel and go through. So just keep that in mind and let's get straight into the different types of acne scars. The first one is called ice pick scarring, also known as pitted scarring. So these develop after like these deep inflamed zits get infected and it destroys the tissue around it. The next one is called box scars. This is what I mainly have on my cheeks right here. I'm going to insert some photos so you can really see what they look like. So these really develop when the breakout destroys the collagen of the skin. So then you're left with these like broad, sharp, indented scarring in your skin. The next one are roller scars. These are broad depressions in the skin, but they don't have the sharp edges. They're more like a sloping edge. These develop when fibrous bands of tissue pull the epidermis. The last main type of acne scarring is called hypertrophic scars, also known as keloids. These develop when there's an overproduction of collagen, so your skin doesn't really know you've already healed the wound. Now, a lot of the times people get confused with hyperpigmentation as scarring when it's not really indented or raised. So they're pretty much pigment of melanin and that's more easily treated than the indented and the hypertrophic scars. So now that you know the different type of acne scars and you have identified the differences between the main four, you can seek the right treatment if you are looking for some. Generally speaking, I'm going to give you some recommendations and pretty much I've gathered notes from my personal research, spoken to professionals. Um, I pretty much adhere to Dr. Davin Lim, who is a certified dermatologist. He loves technology to advance in the cosmetic industry. So for ice pick scarring, aka pitted scarring, um, it's best treated with chemical pills in professional clinics. Now this could include TCA cross. So for instance, with chemical pills, you can have strong concentrations of salicylic acid, glycolic acid. Depending on the strength, the downtime could take up to a few days, two weeks. And it really depends if your skin can tolerate those concentrations. You gotta be really careful and speak to a professional. Um, what happens is it has exfoliating properties to shed the old dead skin cells and renew your skin. So you might look like a reptile for a few days and you can really see the skin peeling off. So the next one are rolling scars and these are treated with fractional lasers, microneedling, derma stamping, skin needling and subcision. Okay, the third one are box scars and generally speaking, if they're really deep, professionals would recommend you guys to do like laser resurfacing such as CO2. With all these three indented type of scarring, you can also use fillers. So with fillers, you gotta be careful because they don't really last very long. You might need to get a refill every like six or so months. Um, so they're only a temporary solution. The last type of scarring, so like keloids and hypertrophic scars, you can get um, steroid shots, which decrease the size of the raised scar. 
Just FYI, these are just general recommendations. If you go to a professional clinic, your dermatologist will specifically look at your type of acne scars and give you more individualized and personalized treatment. Personally, I haven't gone to these clinics to get more intensive ablative treatments. One day I might save enough money and be committed to have a longer downtime. I pretty much always work and I'm always out and about and I don't really have that time to stay at home. And I do teach kids, so I don't want to have a red peeling face, you know. But all in all, I've achieved so much progress with just using microneedling tools at home and that is the Banisher 2.0. What I love about it is so accessible and easy to use. It has these micro needles of 0.5 millimeters and when you stamp it down into your skin it goes straight down instead of those traditional derma rollers that could create track marks on your skin. When you create these micro channels in your skin it pretty much promotes this production of collagen making your skin more plump. Another reason why your skin becomes plump is because with micro needling it increases the absorption of your skin products. Actually, instead of talking, I want to show you my routine. Do you want to see my routine? Okay, I want to show you. I'll be back. Mwah. <laughs> Okay, the first step is to disinfect your microneedling tool. This is crucial to avoid transferring bacteria into your skin. Fill the rubbing alcohol to the line of the cap and leave this for 5 to 10 minutes. I often use the banished pumpkin mask before microneedling. This helps exfoliate my skin and lighten my hyperpigmentation. Do not use a pumpkin mask after microneedling. It's only meant to be used before. If you want to use it after, wait 2-3 to three days minimum. So I wash this after 15 minutes. Okay, and here's me being silly, dancing, um, have fun when you're using the mask. The next step is microneedling. I stretch my skin a little bit and press down onto my skin. It doesn't hurt at all. Once you pick up the stamp, turn 90 degrees and stamp back down. You can do these three to four times on the same spot and then move to the next area. Your skin is slightly red at first, but this goes away very quickly. I then follow up with my hyaluronic acid as this helps retain moisture. Then I follow up with my banished vitamin C oil. Usually I skip the oil and go straight with my vitamin C cream, but today my skin has been feeling super dry due to winter here in Sydney. But anyways, the vitamin C helps hydrate and repair your skin cells and that's it anyways i hope this video was helpful thank you so much for tuning in and you guys can find me at pretty progress 23 and big kisses Mwah. bye guys